two monkeys cured of HIV equivalent. Despite years of research, curing HIV carriers is still a major challenge for the medical world. Perhaps recent work will contribute to making progress in this regard. Recently, two monkeys were cured of a virus with similar characteristics. New research by scientists at Oregon Health and Science University may pave the way for the development of a therapy that scientists hope will become a widespread intervention for contracting the virus that causes AIDS. The study, published in the journal Immunity, describes the process by which two monkeys were cured of simian HIV after receiving a stem cell transplant. Worldwide, approximately 37 million people are infected with HIV. Of this group, only about 60 to 70 percent is taking antiretroviral drugs that inhibit HIV replication but do not eliminate the virus from the body. These therapies allow patients to function as normally as possible, but the drugs must be taken for the rest of their lives. HIV kills about a million people each year. Fourteen years ago Timothy Ray Brown, also known as the Berlin patient, was cured of HIV. In his case, however, there were additional circumstances that allowed it to happen. Well, he was also suffering from myeloid leukemia which first required treatment. A stem cell transplant was necessary. And it was thanks to her that we managed to kill two birds with one stone, but a bit of luck was also needed here. This is because the donor cells were burdened with a certain significant genetic mutation. It concerned the CCR5 gene, which is often used by the virus to infect cells. This mutation prevents infection of immune system cells. After the transplant, Timothy Ray Brown's body also began to produce such cells, which meant that the HIV virus lost its access to him and simply died out in his body. The result was a complete cure. Since then, a total of four similar cases of complete recovery from HIV have been reported worldwide. Currently, however, this type of therapy would be considered too risky. Moreover, the patients had graft-versus-host disease, where the donor's cells attack the host's cells. Recent research may slightly change the approach to such therapies. Although their results cannot yet be considered groundbreaking, these studies were carried out in macaque monkeys carrying the HIV equivalent, the simian immunodeficiency virus, SIV. It affects at least 45 species of primates. Four macaques participated in these tests, which received stem cells from healthy donors. However, the success was not complete. While in the case of two monkeys with this method, they were cured of SIV and remained healthy for the next four years, in the case of the other two the disease relapsed. What exactly was going on in these monkeys? And why were these tests only half successful? First of all, the transplanted cells began to identify the virus as something foreign to the body and attacked it. This behavior is analogous to what we see in the context of leukemia treatment. In turn, the lack of the CCR5 receptor prevented the subsequent relapse of the disease. However, this particular factor did not work for all monkeys. By the way, it was found that the use of antibodies blocking this receptor is able to cause a similar effect as a transplant. Scientists hope to use this in the future to treat people with injections without the need for a stem cell transplant. An ultra-precise prosthetic hand controlled by the mind. Researchers at the University of Michigan have developed an extremely precise prosthetic hand so efficient that it can be used to fasten shirt buttons. 
The work of scientists heralds a new generation of mind-controlled prosthetics and gives amputees the ability to better operate bionic limbs. A physically fit person performs his daily activities effortlessly and without thinking about the network of nerves needed to move his thumbs, fingers or hands. A method developed by researchers from the University of Michigan allows you to continue to use this blissful unconsciousness, even when someone has lost a limb. All it takes is a learning algorithm and some grafted muscles. The new technology, described in an article published in the journal Science Translational Medicine, appears to be more effective than previous attempts to combine brain activity with prosthetic limb movement. The researchers achieved this through a new procedure that allows it to amplify nerve signals and better communicate with the bionic hand. The new method involves splitting the nerve bundles into smaller fibers that allow for more precise control and amplification of the signals passing through the nerves. The approach involves transplanting a small piece of thigh muscle and using machine learning algorithms borrowed from brain-computer interfaces. It acts as a megaphone for severed nerves, allowing participants to perform precise movements such as picking up a small object or moving a zipper. This is the biggest advance in motor control in amputees in many years, said Paul Cederner one of the paper's authors. We have developed a technique that allows precise and intuitive finger control of prosthetic devices using the remaining nerves in the patient's limb. As a result, we were able to provide the most advanced prosthetic control the world has ever seen. As the scientists admitted, the control of the prosthesis is intuitive and does not require learning. Works right away. You can make a prosthetic hand do a lot of things, but that doesn't mean the person is intuitively controlling it. The difference is that on the first try, it works just by thinking about it, and that's our approach, said Cindy Chestek, co-author of the study. Our approach worked on the first try. Participants in the experiments did not have to study. All learning takes place in our algorithms. This is what sets us apart from other approaches. Joe Hamilton, who lost his arm in a fireworks accident in 2013, said the technique offered by scientists at the University of Michigan made him feel like he had his arm back. You can do everything you can with a real hand with this hand. It brings back a sense of normalcy, Hamilton said. One of the biggest hurdles in mind-controlled prosthetics is getting a strong and stable neural signal to feed a bionic limb. Some research groups are targeting the primary source, the brain. This is necessary when working with paralyzed people. But on the other hand, it is invasive and high risk. The Michigan team came up with a completely different approach. Muscles taken from the thigh were wrapped around nerve endings in the arms of the participants in the experiment. In this way, damaged nerves received new tissue to which they could attach. The researchers noted that such a treatment prevents the formation of neuromas and gives the nerves the already mentioned megaphone, i.e. it strengthens nerve signals. During the experiments, two patients had muscle graft electrodes implanted, and these were able to record nerve signals and transmit them to the prosthetic limb in real time. In this case, the muscle acts as a biological amplifier and makes the tension 10 to 100 times higher. I think it's safe to say that these are the largest neural signals ever recorded in a human, Chestek said. With other approaches, you can get 5 or even 50 microvolts. Using a biological amplifier, we saw the first millivolt signals. This opens up completely new possibilities for people using an upper limb prosthesis, she added. And that means more accurate movements. The team of scientists acknowledged that the current results are the result of 12 years of work.
The discovery of how to amplify neural signals will have far-reaching implications for prosthetics. We hope that one day it will become widely available. This technique is applicable to virtually any amputated body part, she emphasized.